What's going on guys, Colton Wish back at it with, yes, a Canadian gaming PC build. This is probably my number one most requested videos, just to do multi-regional videos, Canada, UK, all that kind of stuff. If you guys have a region you want me to cover, leave them in the comment section down below, I'll try to cover it. I'm a little busy right now, but uh, I'll try to make the time to do uh, multiple builds from multiple regions, and I'll try to keep up with them, but no promises. Now this is a $600 Canadian gaming PC build, but a little bit of background, I went to PC Part Picker and I looked at the prices for you Canadians, and I remembered why I don't like doing these builds. You Canadians get absolutely screwed, but hey, I'll try to make some budget builds for you guys because, man, at least you guys got hockey, because these prices are absolutely outrageous compared to us in the States, but hey, that makes a better reason to make these budget end builds to help you guys out. So enough of my rambling, let's get right into this video with the CPU of the build, I went with the AMD FX 6300 3.5 GHz 6 core processor. Now for $600 I wanted to get a PC that could do a little bit of everything whether you want to do editing, live streaming, or gaming and of course it's primarily a gaming build but I wanted to get the FX6300 because it's a 6 core processor and for $123 it's a solid processor for the money. I'm a big fan of the FX6300 I used to put it in a lot of my builds and in Canada this seems like the right CPU to go with. The i3 is about $20 more expensive so I opted to get the FX6300 instead. 3.5 gigahertz and it's a 6 core CPU so it's not bad at all. For the motherboard I went with the Asus M5A78L M USB 3 micro ATX motherboard. It's about $70. Yes, it's a micro ATX board, so it's not a fully featured ATX board, but it does have four RAM slots, so you have upgradability options there. And overall, it's a motherboard that's going to get the job done. It's only $70, so you save a little bit of money, and you can put that towards the crux of your build, the GPU. And this motherboard, it's going to get the job done. It's got some features, but not everything you want. Obviously, you're not going to be going for a Crossfire or SLI configuration in this build, so that should be just fine. And it's a solid motherboard for a very cheap price. For memory, I went with a data XPG 8 gigabytes to 4 gigabytes sticks running at 1600 megahertz for $65. Definitely still wanted to get 8 gigabytes of RAM. That's one thing I did not want to skimp out on, and we got 8 gigabytes from A data. This is $65, so that's actually a solid price. That's relative to what we pay in the state. So A data 8 gigabytes of RAM is just fine. And like I said, the motherboard does have four RAM slots. So in the future, that's an upgradability option you can take. But in a budget and build, 8 gigabytes is just fine. For the hard drive, Western Digital Caviar Blue 1 terabyte, 3.5 inch 7200 RPM internal hard drive. This isn't too bad of a price either. $60. It's a little bit more expensive than what we pay in the States, but solid price, $60 for one terabyte of storage. Obviously no SSD in this build. Much more cost efficient to get the mass storage in the Caviar Blue, and for $60 it's a really good deal. And for a gaming rig, you definitely want the mass storage that the WD Blue offers. One terabyte of storage space is a decent amount. While in an SSD, you probably would have only gotten like 120 gigabytes at most for this price. So one terabyte WD Blue is a solid deal. For the video card, I went with the Gigabyte Radeon R9 270 2 gigabyte Wind Force video card. $190 for this GPU, but hey, I guess you gotta pay to play. And the R9 270 is a solid GPU. It's not gonna max out every game at 1080p, but a game like Witcher 3 you can run at medium to high settings at around 45 frames per second so that's pretty good all you'll have to do is turn down some of the settings for the higher end games and obviously older games like red faction you know the older witcher games the older battlefield games bad company 2 even battlefield 3 and 4 you're gonna be just fine with with this gpu and the r9 270 was really the best gpu i could fit in this budget i really wanted to get like a 280 but it just wasn't feasible so i went with the 270 it's solid 190 dollars and you're gonna be doing decent 1080p gaming it's solid for $190 and you're going to be doing decent 1080p gaming. For the power supply, I went with the EVGA 500 watt 80 plus certified power supply. You can't crossfire in this build, so something like a 500 watt is going to get the job done. And for $49, I wanted to get something cheap and this gets the job done. And that's really all you want from a $600 build in Canada. But it's 80 plus certified and it's from EVGA. They got a lot of nice power supplies and this one was cheap and it's going to get the job done. This one's from EVJ, it's 500 watts, 80 plus certified, it was perfect for the build, and it wasn't going to break the bank either, so this one's perfect. For the case, I went with the Aza Sirius Black ATX Mid-Tower case. I wanted to get a case that was relatively cheap, but still looked pretty decent. This is a solid Mid-Tower case, and right now it's actually $40, and there's also a $15 mail-in rebate, so if you use that, you're getting this case for only $25. But this is a solid case, the main drawing factor of this case was obviously the price. I didn't want to get something like the Apex, because I think that case is just so ugly, so I decided to go with this. This is decent it's not gonna break the bank but it's nothing amazing either it's perfect for the build and it's gonna do everything you want and pretty much nothing else so thanks for watching this video guys if you liked this video leave a like if you disliked obviously dislike comment with your requests for future videos and i'll talk to you all later have a great day peace out